Hey guys. Um, so this guy is uh, is where it's at. I didn't uh, come out last night because I actually went to uh, Sale Electronics to see if I could find some connectors for that uh, battery pack. And uh, no luck, unfortunately. I did ask the guy and he wasn't familiar with them and uh, he didn't have any. Uh, of course, it didn't stop me from spending money. I went and I bought some other stuff. Hex head screw assortment. Or actually, this is a... Uh, they call it a hex head screw assortment, but what it really is is a set screw assortment. Grommet assortment, a couple of tweeters, <laughs> some little stepper motors, which I'm fascinated with them for some reason. So whenever there's a good deal on them, I pick something up. Switch, speaker connectors, jumper wires. Here's a, a micro switch that I'm going to use on the truck for the uh, to activate the uh, brake uh, parking brake assembly. Since that truck didn't have one, this should be an easy thing to wire in. Just ground one end of it and uh, ground the uh, normally closed. Yeah, I had to think about it for a bit, but ground the normally closed end and and then put the wiper on the. Uh, input to the to the e-brake uh, light on the uh, truck there. I could probably use a could have used a smaller one which I did have some smaller ones but but this will work uh, quite well and uh, probably looks familiar if you've ever, ever cracked open a pinball machine. Uh, a lot of very similar switches in that. Usually they have a longer wiper arm on them though but this will work. Anyways apart from that caps and that sort of thing like that there. I don't know if picked up anything else that was interesting to, to that. Just a lot of caps. Okay, so anyways, so that was it for there. <laughs> I was hoping to get a close-up, but she wasn't going to cooperate. She's far too active a cat. Anyways, I was thinking about how I'm going to mount these motors. I did pick up some other stuff. And uh, I remember the other day I was talking about turnbuckles, using turnbuckles to, you know, go like it would be pivoted off the bottom one, and then turnbuckles to the top pieces to tie it down. And it occurred to me that if it was just pivoted right here, it's not going to be very solid. It's going to matter of fact, it's going it, to, every time it torques, it's going to go like that either, depending upon which direction it's going to go at. So I'm going to work up a bracket that will attach to here but we'll also go around here to uh, clamp it and then I'll have uh, have a long shaft here. <laughs> Thanks. A long shaft. You're really not going to help, are you? A long shaft that's going to attach around here and clamp onto that and go through here and that'll be the whole pivot for the long the whole length of it. A lot like the way uh, an alternator typically is mounted. And uh, that'll keep it from twisting, and then I can just use the turnbuckles uh, to the frame. But in order for that to work, I need uh, a second mounting point for this to weld to on the frame. And whereas I guess I could just use a piece of uh, quarter-inch plate for for the pivot at this side to, to mount to, um, I think I'm going... I know I pretty much have to do it, so I think I'm going to just do it. And that is... Uh, I'm going to have to make kind of a cross member here. So either I use a straight piece here, which would work for perfectly well, but I kind of have a feeling that it's going to need extra bracing, so I might just go and make the uh, cross pieces otherwise. But uh, eh, we'll see how we go. I'll work out how I'm going to mount the motors first, and then I'll, uh, I'll worry about that first uh, next. Nevertheless, I'm going to make some progress today. We should have the motors on here and and spin some tires at least, even if we can't be balancing. Okay, so that's what I'll actually end up doing for uh, for this. Just to give you some idea what I was talking about when I was talking about using a turnbuckles to tension it. I'll, uh, I'll set it up, like I said, with a pivot on the back here. I'm not going to weld it to this. I'm going to use a... Uh, what's, a what's a clamp term? Um, oh... Well, I'll show you when it's done. I know what I, I know what it is I want. <laughs> I'll show you when it's done. Um, I also was uh, doing some measuring on the cross member. I'm going to use a, a single cross member across the back that these will mount to. And then I'm going to do my cross 
my X cross member. And actually, I was looking for my pen, and I can't find my pen, so I can't write down the measurement I calculated, but it's 13.85 inches. Um, I also had cracked this battery open, or the battery case open, and uh, that's the connector, but you know what? I don't think I'm going to use it. I, I've decided what I'm going to do is, because these batteries are pretty friggin' heavy, like these are lead-acid batteries, and they're fairly large, there's two of them, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them apart, make a long jumper cable here, and, and uh, two long jumper cables to go to the motor controller, and... Uh, and I'm going to just to improve the balance of this thing because it actually, you know, even with that battery in the back, it doesn't take a lot. This is a fairly light frame. And, uh, and even with that battery in the back, it would have, any time you stopped and you got off, it would have popped the wheelie like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dismount uh, or take the batteries out of the case and I'm going to mount one on each side directly centered over the, uh, over the, uh, over the wheel. The, the motors will be slightly behind the, the uh, the axle at uh, at this point here, and uh, and I think that'll do me good for this stuff here, and uh, and it'll kind of leave an empty space on the back here, but uh, I don't think it's going to be too big a deal here. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to weld that cross piece in here, but I got to cut it and see if I can find a couple of you know the pieces of of some of these gates. See if there's something that's usable. See, some of these are pretty banged up here, <laughs> but uh, it's good steel. Nothing wrong with it. I think that piece there that's just kind of sitting on the pile would be okay. Just using your uh, your old scrap here, and uh, this is quality stuff. I can't see it. Oh, somebody's using it for target practice there. I believe these were made in the states. If not, they were made in Canada. No Chinese stuff here. Anyways. <laughs> You know, contrary to everything else that's on here, Chinese, Chinese gear, I'm sure, or a sprocket, I should say. I'm sure the bearings are made in China. Were you made in China? I don't think so. You're made locally. Anyways, I'll get to it. Hey, guys. Well, I don't know what I was talking about when I was saying, like, 13.85 inches. I don't know where that number came from. I went and I redid that calculation, and... Uh, and uh, came out to a much, much larger number. It's a good thing I hadn't started cutting a bunch of pipe yet because uh, I would have been out of luck. Um, should have been closer to just under 34. Uh, regardless, here's my cross member piece. I'm going to try something uh, a little bit different this time. I'm going to um, clamp it in the mill and I'm going to use one of my hole saws to do the fish mouth and see how that turns out for me. And because uh, I can do it a lot more precisely there. And uh, I'm going to cut up this remainder of this piece here. I should get enough for one of the cross pieces. And since the other cross piece is going to uh, meet this one in the middle, um, I'll actually be cutting into two pieces. So I'll need like two, you know, 17 inch pieces, which I should be able to get out of this or some of those pieces of scrap gate behind the shop there. So I'll show you what I did, or and uh, or will do, and uh, and bring you back. So hey guys, so if you uh, ever feel a need to get yourself one of those fish mouthing tools, just find yourself a good cheap uh, used mill, uh, because boy, it worked really well. Now I guess I didn't quite hit it center. I'll have to move it a bit. I thought I'd calculate it all now. Well, I index off the back and and all that, and then I had to lift the. Uh, the quill up, so that's probably what threw me off. But in any case, it does a nice job uh, cutting it. wasn't that slow, and uh, did a nice, neat job. I bet this will fit up really nicely against the uh, tubing over there. I'll take this off and uh, and and I'll show you. So yeah, it was a little bit off center, so I'll have to re uh, recenter that, and make sure I get that uh, right. Looks like it was sitting a little bit too far back, but uh, plant that against there. Looks perfectly good to me, and a very very tight fit. You can see, and should be perfectly square. So I just have to figure out where I'm cutting this one or this end, and uh, we should be good to go. Okay, there we go. We're all in there. 
fitting up really, really nice. Uh, that's the only way I'm going to do these uh, fish mouths. Uh, fish mouths. How the hell do you say that? For some reason, it's a tongue twister. Anyways, uh, that's the only way I'll do these from now on. That was so easy. Uh, fits in there great. Probably a little bit too tight. I might have cut it a little bit long, but I think that's fine. Might be spreading it apart a little bit, but uh, we'll brace it up good. Um, I hate to say it, but I think these tires have to come out again. But uh, now that everything's fit up, I don't think it's going to be too big a deal. Let's take the bolts out and, uh, and we'll redo it again. But, uh, but we'll sort out... Well, we've pretty much sorted out that. I'll set that length. I sprayed this with some wax and grease remover to take off the uh, cutting oil. But I still have to take this out to sand it up anyways. So I might just hit that with a heat gun to dry that off. I didn't want to use brake cleaner because if you haven't read that article, look up for the look for the article on brake cleaner, welding, and the production of uh, a gas called phosgene. Because it can uh, severely, severely injure your uh, or damage your lungs and permanently damage your lungs. Um, so it's not something that I mess with anymore. I won't use brake cleaner on anything that I'm going to weld anymore. Regardless, let's um, clean this up and uh, sort out how we're going to weld that. I actually, probably before I weld that, I might as well do make up my cross pieces. I'm not going to put another cross member at the front. I think that's just overkill. But I'm going to use do the uh, cross thing, probably for no other good reason other than it'll look nice. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so here's how I set up to cut at 45 degrees. Not exactly the most secure solution, but I didn't have any problems with it. Uh, the most observant people will notice two things about this picture. One is that I'm no longer using a 1 and 3 8 hole saw. And they'll also notice that the 1 and 3 8 or that the 1 and a half inch hole saw I am using is missing a few teeth. Uh, you really have to feed real slowly at first, otherwise you rip the teeth off these things. That's what happened to the 1 and 3 8 and that's what happened to this one. But it's still cutting on the other teeth. Nevertheless, that was a bit of an expensive lesson, twice. Um, but it occurred to me after I was already, you know, well into doing this that, okay, first off, maybe I should have had the pipe dump on the other side, then I wouldn't have to take the arms off of the, <laughs> the, the, the uh, large feed. But it also occurs to me that if I instead would have used the lathe, it would have been a hell of a lot easier because it's set up to... To feed things, well, it's it would have been a lot easier to feed something in at an angle, like to cut it into this. Well, to feed it that way into it, but I could have used the uh, manual feed. This was pretty slow, or I could use the automatic feed here to do it. But I also could have set any angle I wanted to on the uh, on the uh, compound. So it would have been a lot easier to have clamped it down. I just would have had to have taken the uh, taken it off there. But nevertheless. Uh, not too worried about it. I could have probably made an adapter to go in place of the uh, tool post here. In any case, yes, yeah, somebody just woke up after a busy day. Any case, I'll put this piece on, but I'll show you what I've got so far here. Um, this isn't exactly 45 degrees. I had to compromise a little bit because I wanted it to meet at that join there and that join there so that it wouldn't look a little bit odd. But nevertheless, this should be plenty strong. Uh, once I'm done that, then I will work on my mounting for the motors. And, uh, and well, <laughs> I'll be happy to see that. Because then this thing actually will, will be mobile. So I welded the first part of this cross member in. I'm wasting time right now, just uh, waiting for the stuff to cool. Oh boy, there. I'll have to fill that. That shouldn't be too hard. Hard to get into there, so there's definitely voids in both spots. But I'll live with that. This isn't oh, this isn't a pressure vessel. This is just my toy. So nevertheless, you know, things all cleaned up, ready to go. All my bits. Oh, actually, no, I haven't cleaned those up. Ah, okay. Well, I know what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of minutes. I'll do those, weld those in, and then that will be finished with the cross member here. And this things will be so solid. You know, I don't know what I could do with it. Maybe we'll put a blade on the front. Okay, there's the first cross piece, fully welded. You know, spots I couldn't get into very well, obviously, right in there, but such as it is. And I guess I'll do the other two pieces.
Okay, there you go, fully welded. And, uh, oh, that was uh, a lot of work. I think one of the goats is uh, stuck outside. The little buggers, uh, two of them figured out how to get uh, out of the uh, out of the pen. Anyways, um, so this is all welded. So now it's just my uh, uh, motor mounts left yet, and uh, I'm not going to get to that tonight. There's the wheels. Um, but I'll tell you what I was planning on doing. I've got some 3 8 inch uh, steel bar here. I don't know what that is. It's 2 inch. Looks more like 2.5. But nevertheless, um, I'll drill a hole in it. That'll fit exactly over that. Or I'll probably bore a hole in it. Uh, that'll fit exactly over that. And what I'll do is I'll slit it at the top. Put a bolt through that way that's threaded on one side and you know open on the other and that'll just clamp it and that'll clamp it on this end then I'll bring that down uh, weld a oh I guess it's going to just be a tube onto the end I'll call it a tube but it'll be you know solid except for drilled out to a quarter inch or maybe a little bit smaller and I'll just thread it on either end and uh, it'll match up with that hole there on that side I'll make a bracket on one end that'll go here onto the frame and at the other end I'll make another bracket that'll go here on the frame and then that'll hold it solidly in place and you won't get that fork that I was worried about and then these as well two tabs on either side to uh, to uh, you know tension it with these two things here and go front and back that way and then that will be that but that's not going to get done tonight I think I said at the beginning of the video that it would be but uh, I'm uh, I'm knackered <laughs> Um, so I'm going to shut everything down and go in, well actually I'm going to go pick up some Chinese food, but nevertheless, that's it for today guys, thanks a lot for watching, as everybody likes to say, rate, comment, subscribe, uh, every view is much appreciated, thanks a lot guys.